Dear Judge O'Keefe, what was the impact of losing our daughter, Kristen, to the Smart family? It negatively impacted each family member's outlook on life, along with countless friends and supporters of justice for Kristen. This is a parent's worst nightmare, the disappearance and death of their child. My wife and I were suddenly missing one of our children, our oldest child. We shared her hopes, her dreams, her aspirations, as she became a beautiful young adult, and now she would never be able to have a full life and achieve these things. She would not be graduating from college, going to a new job, getting married, having children, and leading a normal full life. As a parent, you fall into a pit of despair, and you long to see her smile again. You become a risk taker. Since you are missing the child and that part of love for your family, you are willing to travel anywhere and to meet with anyone that thinks they have information regarding the whereabouts of your child. Your wife is distraught to the point of quitting her teaching position, and I needed to bury myself into further school administrative work to occupy my mind and continue with some semblance of normal life. Reflecting back on some 26, like 27 years now, initially my wife's focus and mine were to find Kristen alive. Within weeks, we learned from the Cal Poly police that she had been at an off-campus party and possibly killed by the last person she was seen with, Paul Flores. We worked at keeping our younger children, Matt and Lindsay, sheltered from this horrific uh, crime or event. They have been scarred emotionally at the loss of their sister. Matt became very defensive and slept at night with a baseball bat under his bed. Lindsay became less social and would not attend age group gatherings without having one or more friends accompanying her. The murder of our eldest child added considerable stress to our marriage. We would never have seen Kristen's smiling face again. We would never see it again. The feeling of her hugs, her kisses, enjoying her company, and being able to watch her learn to cook and to travel the globe with us. Our family has to spend the rest of our lives adjusting to this reality that Kristen was stalked, drugged, raped, and horrifically murdered by Paul Flores. He had his family, he and his family have continued to hide her remains and deny our family the opportunity to bring home for an appropriate funeral. But the first of these years during her disappearance, his former criminal defense attorney tried to plea bargain down her death twice with previous San Luis Obispo district attorneys. The attorney was offering for Paul Flores to lead law enforcement to our daughter's remains if and only if he was charged with an infraction or a misdemeanor. It is now abundantly clear that Paul and his family, and uh, all of them took the fifth not to incriminate themselves, and have no remorse for taking our daughter's life and are unwilling to assist in locating her remains. Judge O'Keefe, for these reasons, I feel strongly that Paul Flores should receive the maximum sentence <coughs> for first-degree murder, especially since he committed this horrific murder and continues to hide her remains. This is devastating to our whole family, relatives, friends, and community supporters. We are no longer a whole family of two parents and three children. Suddenly, all of this was totally disrupted, and our family life, which <clears throat> was turned upside down when the murder, Paul Flores callously took our daughter's life. Prior to Kristen's disappearance, we were anticipating moving from Stockton to Napa, where I accepted a new principalship at Village High School. Now all of that energy was shifted to locating our missing daughter. 
My wife stayed in Stockton to respond to phone calls, and I spent the summer months in San Luis Obispo looking for my daughter's body. We stayed in touch daily using a portable phone. There were no cell phones at the time. The phone was about as large as a shoebox. I organized numerous searches and in and around the campus and along the coastline. Community members assisted and local merchants provided lunches and drinks. The searches were not productive and I became more and more frustrated in the months and years of searching that followed. At the time of Kristen's disappearance, there was a huge water pipe being installed near the campus and they had an open trench. And also, the Cal Poly Fine and Performing Arts Building was being constructed on campus. Both had to be investigated as possible burial sites. And the campus, the mountains, lakes, and <coughs> without any productive results. Additionally, we worked closely with the news media to keep our daughter's missing case alive in the public eye. We spent time appearing on at least five television shows. <coughs> Lastly, we started using billboard signs along Highway 101 to get public attention, and our Arroyo Grande civil attorney placed a billboard in his front, in front of his office, indicating a reward leading to the arrest and conviction of our daughter's killer. Our family continued to suffer at the loss of Kristen. Fortunately, the billboard caught the attention of a young man named Chris Lambert. And he researched the disappearance of Kristen and decided to tell her story as a podcaster. The court evidence has shown that after our daughter's murder, Paul Flores proceeded to prey on numerous <coughs> intoxicated women. He met at bars by drugging them and repeatedly raping them and videotaping them, the heinous acts with the label practice. He definitely has demonstrated a proclivity to this type of unlawful abhorrent behavior during the past 26 years. We have seen no remorse, sadness, or grief or emotion from him or his family members during this time. After attending three months of pretrial and another three months of criminal trial, it has become evident that he and they do not see our behavior towards, do not see rather his behavior towards women or his, or our daughter's demise as repugnant or significant. Again, I respectfully request that Paul Flores receive the maximum sentence for first degree murder hopefully 25 years to life without parole. Thank you.